Good afternoon, everybody. We are back. It's the right side of campus. We're live on a Thursday, November 16th, 2017. I'm your host, the big man on campus here. With my co-host, Donnie Wright said, Donnie, we got two shows left. And then we're headed to the mornings here at sbrpicks.com. Two shows left. We have to make them count. Donnie Wright said, how you doing today? Yeah, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Going to be Monday morning. Excited for that. You know, we get to recap a lot of stuff. We'll have some fun on that show. Nice 10 to 11 spot. Hit you right up in the morning. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But, I mean, as, as you know, the beat goes on, Jeff, a lot of sports to talk about, a lot of interesting stuff. And, again, on the home front last night, which I know you're going to get into just a little bit, if you stayed up last night, Jeff. And, hey, I stayed up last night, Jeff, because I'm in the Philadelphia area. You know, I didn't have to wake up too early today. I watched the entire Sixer game. You'd be very proud of me, man. You know, Donnie, I uh, I had a quite a night last night, to be real with you. I can't believe I did it all in one night. It's like I, you know, I did those. Have you ever seen Rounders, Donnie? Have you ever seen that movie? Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you, you remember in the movie when basically Worm tries to get Mike to go to ha- to uh, the Trump to play poker and stuff? And they literally yeah. did it, yep. like, overnight, basically. That's basically what I did last night. My father called me. He's like, hey, um, my, my father's really busy. He's bu- he, wor- he works a ton. Um, you know, he's got a lot going on. So he calls me at like three o'clock in the afternoon. He's like, Hey, listen, uh, I-, I can't get down to the shore. Is there any way you can go down and it's getting really cold, turn the heat on, check out the house, you know, do the stuff, the shore stuff, Donnie, you know what I'm talking about. Um, mm-hmm, so I sure. said, well, I-, I said, yeah, I could do it. He goes, I don't care when you do it. You just need to do it by the weekend. I said, okay. So I'm thinking to myself, when can I do this? So I decide last night at like late that I'm going to go down last night to do it. So I, I'm driving down. I'm I'm listening to Gabe. I get down. I watch the second half of the Sixers. I stayed up the whole night. I went to the Borgata, played a little, left, came home. I got home at like 7.30. I slept for a little bit, and now I'm here. But I did watch one of the most amazing performances we've seen in this town in some time. And, Donnie, we're getting to the point with Joel Embiid where he is starting to – Look, I don't know about you, but I can't say I've seen a performance dominating like that in a pretty long time in the NBA. You remember back when Michael Jordan was around where he was just in these zones where no one could stop him? You remember them games? Oh, sure. Absolutely. That's what that reminded me of last night. That That's what that reminded me of. It was it, it was just it was amazing. It was perfect. It was it was it was beautiful. You just see him just dominate. They couldn't stop Joel Embiid last night. Ben Simmons was unbelievable. It's 46, 15, seven and seven, Donnie. It was one of the more pristine conditions I've, I've seen, uh, or, or pristine games that I've seen. I mean, I didn't think this guy would, I thought he'd be really good, but you're looking on Donnie at this point. I remember when Shaq was around the way he used to dominate, but Joel Embiid can go out and shoot the basketball. He's good from the foul line. He was unbelievable last night, Donnie. You know, I was talking about it this morning with a couple people, just going over saying it wasn't the fact that, you know, he got 46 because you can look at some guards in the NBA. You know, you just get hot one night, you're 9 of 11 from three, and, you know, you got a, a bunch of easy dunks. The score was, you know, 132, 128 you know, or whatever it was. But you're right, man. To be a big man and do it how many different ways from the foul line with different moves, post moves, three-pointers, step-back jumpers, jumpers from the key, it was – it was an amazing performance, man. You see the ceiling on this guy. If he can stay healthy, is outrageous, man. It was great. I mean, he's just going in, and he's dominating them in the low block. Then he's taking it out, and he's hitting threes. I mean, he's hitting foul shots. He's getting fouled at a high rate. I mean, listen, I mean, the, the big man is gone in the NBA, which is a shame. But I think there's still some really good ones left. You know, Cousins, Anthony Davis, you know, Joel Embiid's getting to the point where it's like, if he could stay healthy, if 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 uh, Ben Simmons, who Donnie Ben Simmons through his 14 games, has not as many points per game as Magic Johnson, but he's beating him in both rebounds and assists. I mean, if he can keep up, and this duo can keep it up, you bring in Fultz to play the two. You know, Covington. I got to tell you, Donnie, I've been critical of Robert Covington throughout the years. You know, I, I think for for me, we've been through the process, Donnie. I've been a fan of this team my whole life. You know, we had some great times with AI. We had, you know, we had the tank for many years. And, you know, Covington kind of came in in the middle of that. And he kind of, you look at the genesis of his game, Donnie, from where Covington went from from now 
until three years ago. I mean, th- the transition of his game is amazing. I mean, he's he he's he's one that has earned the money. If you ask me, Donnie, all these all that money. I mean, what a what a genesis that he's made, Donnie. Yeah, coming from where he came from, I mean, a scrap heap guy. Like, look, just to fill out your roster, it's one of those guys who, you know, yeah, pulls it up from the bootstraps there and says, you know what, nobody wants me, and I'm on a team I can, you know, that's not actually trying to win in two years. What a great place to showcase my talent and force them to like me. And not only force them to like me, but be an absolute really good player in the NBA, play defense, hit threes. I mean, we're talking about a guy, Jeff, who came in the league that wasn't a very good jump shooter and now is a very good three-point shooter, plays defense, hustles, fits exactly that profile of what you want, Jeff, for that six man on your NBA team, right to a T. So, so all of a sudden, Donnie, you have Ben Simmons, your point. You got Fultz if he comes back at two, which, listen, I mean, it is what it is with Fultz. We'll see what happens when he comes back. You got Covington at the three. You have, you know, Reddick for the time being at the two. Reddick Redick needs to play better. He's not shot the ball well lately, which I think long-term we've learned with Reddick, he'll be fine shooting the basketball. Um, Sarge has struggled as well a little bit, but, but you're, all, you're all of a sudden starting to see a really decent team. And if these two t- kids play the way they have and will, I mean, sky's the limit for the Sixers, really, because, you know, the East is, as we always know, up for grabs. There are better teams than the Sixers, surely. But, you know, they're, I, like I said, I think they're one midseason acquisition away from being a real competitor in this conference, which is amazing. But these two kids are playing unbelievable right now. And Covington's been a great defender. You can generally put him on the best player, and he'll play well defensively. It's really been an amazing thing. And what a night last night for Joel. But, um, Donnie, uh, that was kind of our little preamble. But we welcome all of you guys in to the right side of campus. Uh, it is Thursday, and we thank all of you guys for listening, checking us out today. I see some some uh, old uh, faces in here, some some guys always that are in here showing love. I see uh, this thing we do, uh, uh, a mainstay on Twitter for many years. I hope you're well, my friend. Uh, he's not a Lonzo Ball fan, giving Lonzo Ball some shit. Uh, yeah, Lonzo didn't play well last night. He was kind of embarrassing, frankly. Uh, but what do you know, Donnie? His father wasn't in attendance last night, so uh, he could have played well and he wouldn't have had to deal with the father. But you, you got to feel – and this is my main thing, Alonzo Ball, Donnie. And I don't know about you. I know you're kind of numb on ball. You don't really have a, 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 an opinion either way. But I personally feel bad for the kid, frankly. I think he's got a ton on his shoulders. He's literally a kid coming out of college with a target on his back because of his father. And his father, again, I know he's trying to be funny. He's trying to build something. But the kid looks lost. I mean, as far as, like, in his head, I think he's got a pretty good game. I think he's a good point guard. I just think he's got so much on his head right now, Donnie. I don't know what – you know, how, how do you get out over that? I mean, he's he looks really kind of just scared, you know, and, and, and a lot on his shoulders. Yeah, no, you're. It's it's interesting because you you know he had the target, but I mean he played it all along in the off season and you know coming out. We know every time his pop was on ESPN two or ESPN three, and I get it's your father and do all that stuff, but you have to be smart enough as a father just to take a step back. You did the great job. Like your job is like getting the kid ready. You know, overall from what you hear from all through growing up, good kid. He made it to the NBA, made it to UCLA. He's a high price guy. Just let him go. Like hand him off to the experts that know how to shape his image. Like get him a really good agent. Get him a really good marketing company because anybody would have been able to pick him up. And you know what, Lonzo, we're gonna have a meeting today with Reebok, Adidas, and Nike, and you're gonna go to the highest bidder. You're gonna be paid well right off the bat. They're gonna design a signature shoe for you there. We're gonna handle all that stuff. And your father just stepped in and said, you know, give me like two billion dollars if you want my son. And all everybody's like, look, man, there's top ten picks every single year. We'll move. We'll we'll find another guy and we'll. Put that money in the hand. Like when you're a top three draft pick, Jeff, in the NBA, it doesn't even matter if you're good anymore. As long as you have the right marketing right off the bat, you're set for life. But I also look at Lonzo Ball and I say to myself almost in a way like, dude, why don't you at some point man up and say, dad, sit the fuck down. I did all this. Right, get out. You know, stop. You know, he, it, La- LeVar comes off as this guy who's like, you're going to thank me for all I did for you throughout your life. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, no offense to LeVar, but. Lonzo did all this. I don't think it was anything you did on the court. You were just there, and and you're there. I mean, it's time that Lonzo, in a way, kind of speaks up and says, look, leave me, shut up, Dad. Okay, get out of the limelight. I'm here. Let me do my thing. I'm going to speak for myself because I'm an adult. That's kind of my problem with Lonzo, in a way. It's like, hey, why don't you man up with a backbone a little bit? Like you, you know, I watched their uh, their little reality show, and like even his fucking yeah. girlfriend tells him whatever, whatever he, whatever she wants. He does. He's like a little baby. Like, 
Stand yeah, up for I don't even know, but he's, he just has that that introvert personality, that monotone. Like, and and the same thing, Jeff, I which I say, like when you look yeah. at the number one overall pick is Markel Fultz. Like, one thing you like out of players, especially that high up, you know Embiid cares about the game. You watch Ben Simmons, and he's demonstrative during the basketball game. You watch Markel Fultz, and you watch Lonzo Ball. They're very meek out there. Like, you, you can't be a team leader. You have to yeah. run with the Wolves, man. The NBA is about Wolves and who's going to lead and who's going to fight to be the leader of that team where people go, you know what? I'm bringing this basketball up. We're going to win this basketball game. Not that little meat guy that's like, you know, meat, 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 meat. Come on, man. Step up. He, he needs a... Uh... He needs some some um, emotional stability. He needs a he needs something good to happen to him, you know, in a way. Like I know he's in the NBA and he's young and he's he's you know doing his thing, but he needs some confidence. And look, I, you know, Luke Walton is is a young guy. I don't know if he generally maybe Luke, Luke someone needs to go to him and say, look, what's up, man? You know, you need you, you, what's going on with you right now? Because I think he'll say it's not his father, but it is. His father is has definitely put him in a, a targeted position and. He said some great games, I thought. I don't – look, it's 14 games into the season. I think he's going to be fine. I think he's a good point guard. He just needs to get some confidence in himself, which, Donnie, I remember last year. Nelson Aguilar, remember the, the, the pitfalls he was in at one point? I mean, I remember him yeah. having emotional, uh, mental problems at one point. Um, you know, Going to the strip you know, club, getting caught up where he's, like, getting heisted sure. up. Yeah, I mean, he had a, he had a rough go, and it, it was the same guy that when you popped on the tape at USC, you say, God damn, this kid can play football. And then you see him on the Eagles and be like, this is this have, like, a you know, one of those alien uh, transplants where they just sucked him up out of his body and put somebody else in his body. But now you're starting to see it. Confidence does go a lot. And, again, let's remember, sure. I mean, you, you're not only going up – like, you played high-level UCLA, I get it. But now you're stepping into that men's league world where they just said – Hey, Lonzo, here's the ball. Lead us to a win. And not to say, Jeff, he's not coming into a, a uh, Celtic situation, a Cleveland, you know, um, Cleveland Cavaliers situation. He came onto a really bad basketball team and had that he- that mantra like, all right, Lonzo, just take the ball and we're going to get to the playoffs. Let's go. And I mean, I'm not trying to make more excuses for him, but it doesn't help that he doesn't le- le- legitimately have a, a, a great player on that team. I mean, that's what's tough about. I mean, you put him on a team with a star, Donnie, where he can kind of get them the ball. They can do the, you know, you know, they can kind of create. I don't, people need to realize, and and that's where if you're bothering him about his shot, I think you need to relook at what his game is. He is not a shooter. He's not a scorer. That's, and that's where for me, it's kind of lost because I see him drop six assists and have seven rebounds, but only four points. People are like, what the fuck? Lonzo only had four points. He's not a scorer, Donnie. I mean, he's a pure. He's a point guard. That's not what he's. He's not coming into the game to be a a go-to scorer. That's where people need to wake up. It's not what he does. But he needs some confidence. He'll get it. Uh, we're very young into the season. Um, did I get my big baller shirt? Yeah, yeah. I wore one the other day. Um, so yeah, that was uh, that was taken care of. Um, but uh, Donnie, let's get into a little football. Uh, we got two games tonight. Uh, in the uh, no, I do not take bets. That is incorrect. Uh, don't say that, Donnie. Uh, I do not want. Don't don't hit me up and ask me if I take bets. I do not take bets. Go to sportsbookreview.com. Check out all the ratings guides. Get a sportsbook on there. There's a ton. Um, yeah. There's a ton of uh, of great sportsbooks. SBR Picks does a great job of uh, blogging. Great information as far as articles. Got schedules over there. And Donnie, as always, schedules going to be changing around a little bit. So make sure you look for that. Um, does big man set shirt say Saturdays are for the boys? No, uh, it says Saturdays are for Belmar, Donnie, uh, which uh, Ooh, if you're a short person, you uh, if you're a short person, you know all about the great place that is Belmar, New Jersey. I urge all of you, um, if you're young and uh, in love or not in love or, in, you know, just a young person in general, do yourself a favor someday and take a trip to Belmar, New Jersey. Go to DJ's 18th and Ocean Avenue, one of the best clubs in the world. Go there, uh, you'll be taken care of. Uh, so yeah, Saturdays are for Belmar, Donnie, not for the boys. Uh, for the boys, no, go. I want it for you the go. girls. Saturdays are for the girls, Donnie. That is um, true. That's what yeah. I hope. Um, but um, let's uh, let's get into tonight. Uh, we had some interesting Maction last night, Donnie. Um, which yeah. I made a comment, Donnie. Maction blows, dude. <laughs> I think it's stop. Come on, Maction is it fantastic. Sucks. No, it stinks. It. stinks. Maction it blows. only stinks when you lose on Maction, Jeff. Remember that. Well, realistically, I didn't have a, a horse in the race last night, but I'll say this. I think it's a shitty conference anymore. It's impossible to predict. It's it when, when something looks 
too good to be true. It always is. Um, but hey, um, I, listen, I used to like it, and it can redeem itself um, at some point. But I, I just don't, re- you know. And it's it's interesting because um, you know I used to love like the Sun Belt and um, the Mac, and I don't hate it, but it's just it's kind of lame. I don't know. I kind of get sick of it. I, I I thoroughly enjoy it because it's wild. Again, Jeff, the pref, the premise of the Mac is, you're right, it's Maction. And Maction wasn't coined as just a phrase because it was like, oh, high-scoring game. Maction really interpreted it as once we kick the football off, we really have no idea what's about to take place out here, who's going to play, who's going to hide an injury, and what sixth-string running back quarterback is going to throw for 400 or run for 300 yards at any given time. That's Amazing. Maction. That's what it's for there. Yeah. It's amazing. No, Brendan. I, no, I don't take bets. Donnie opens up a can of I don't take bets. Stop asking me. Go to sportsbookreview.com. Make sure you get accredited. Bo- I, I don't know. Stop. See, Donnie, you're starting rumors. If the federal government's watching this, they're going to think I'm a book. I'm not a book. They're going to open an inquiry. They're going to open the uh, Northeast branch out of Philadelphia is going to open an inquiry on you, Jeff, pretty soon. Like I said, like Steve Stevens says, I'm not a bookie. I'm a bookie killer. Uh, no, I'm not a bookie, please, Brennan. Stop, stop asking, please. Uh, just enjoy the show. Uh, and, yeah, no, but Max, and last night, our- Jeff, just getting back over it there. The over, the one play I had gave out on the closing line. Been a good run on the closing line. I coughed it up on Tuesday. One on Monday, coughed it up on Tuesday with Ohio. Came back with an, I mean, I'm talking an easy winner last night, Jeff. Now, see, that Toledo team that came out and played last night, I know it's Bowling Green. But that's the Toledo that you've seen all season long, Jeff, except for Ohio. But that's the issue, When you thought Donnie. Ohio was really good. And then they flip the next week over, they turn it back on, and Ohio goes back in the doldrums. It's great. Like, that's Man. my problem. It's like a fucking dart throw, Donnie. I mean, you, you know, you get – like, Toledo needs to win last week. They shut, they shit themselves. Then they go out and beat Bowling Green. Big deal. Uh, Miami of Ohio. By the way, Donnie, I've made a – I'm making a little list. This whole thing where they have three wins and need three more to make a bowl – those teams lose. They've been losing over the last couple weeks. I've noticed, like, Syracuse was one. Eat Miami of Ohio last night was one. These teams that have to win to make a bowl, it seems like they're all losing. It's amazing. But yeah. uh, let's look at tonight's games. Uh, we'll get into the uh, game. Um, yeah, yeah, this thing we do. You know the deal, my man. Um, <laughs> uh, where we, I wanted to make a – oh, Jeff is a pump for basketball. He'll be back into the MAC next year. No, I, I don't really – I, I'm just not really too interested in it anymore, frankly. I, I was, uh, I, you know what I was watching last night, Donnie, before I left? I was watching uh, Sleepers, a great movie. I don't know if you've ever seen it. Um, I was watching that. Was, come on. You always ask me that, too, like really good movies. Like You can ask me the, the Bumble ones, but movie, the really good ones I watched, yes. And I did see it on yeah, last night. You're right. As soon as I saw you, I was actually flipping through there, and within five minutes you posted the scene where they were walking through the hallways with uh, Kevin Bacon yeah, yeah. in the uh, cellar. Yeah. I strongly recommend if you need a good movie to watch, Sleepers. Very good movie. Uh, good Kevin Bacon, good. Robert Yeah, Robert De Niro, um, Jason Patrick. Great movie. Um, it, it always uh, at the end, Donnie. You know, the the strings they go to to help their friends. You know, yeah. that's uh, that oh. great movie. Um, what's your record in college basketball? Right. right, right. It's amazing. You're totally right. Um, I, I think it's 18. I don't, I'm just giving games out for free, Jake. I, I don't really care about the record. Um, just enjoy, enjoy the win, as Andy Reid would say, Donnie. Matthew uh, Stevens says, Donnie, Forrest Gump, have you seen it? See that? We're, we're catching the sarcasm out here, Jeff. We're catching on. I'll be real. I haven't seen that movie. So, uh, I swear to God, I haven't. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, <laughs> I'm serious. I don't, I've never seen it. Uh, let's get into, uh, let's get into the uh, card today, Donnie. Uh, by the way, we have college basketball all day. So, uh, Ass, yes, I uh, saw I that. Jeff. Right. Um, Donnie, let me ask you when um, this summer, we got to get you to DJs at some point. I see. I see. We, I mean, I, I just live a different life now. You know what I mean? It's almost like, oh, like you when, when you live the, the when you live the, yeah, I guess the wife, I guess we had to include her in that because it's almost like, you know, the wife wants to go out on like a Thursday and meet the uh, girls for drinks. Cool, babe. Have a great time. Uh, Saturday, I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to go here, and I'll be home a little bit later. You know what, babe? Have a great time. And then it turns into this, Jeff. You ready for this? I uh, got me and my boys some Sixers tickets for Wednesday. Oh, so you're going to go to the Sixers game and not spend any time with anybody else. That's, that's my life right now, man. It's my life. And then it's, oh, where are you going on Saturday? Oh, I'm actually going up to DJ's up in Belmar. Why? You're 40 years old. Oh, and... I know this guy. He's younger. Exactly. He's uh, 
a friend of mine. We work together. We're uh, going to have a couple of drinks. Where at? Belmar. What are you going to do to Belmar for? We're a brigand team. What do you need to go there for? Yeah, I got like, yeah, exactly. Same thing. I got like my boys asking me like, hey, man, let's get a meet up from college. You know, we'll all stay over in Hoboken. And I'm like, how the hell do you guys get past your wife yeah. that you're going to sleep out right. in Hoboken and have fun with your friends? Like, do what? I must live on a different planet. I don't know. It's still. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as the sports betting, yeah, we're, we're very excited uh, about it. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, you know, I know, Donnie, you know, we both spend probably half the year in, in New Jersey. You live there. Uh, you spend a lot of time down the shore as well. Um, I've been going there since I was able to walk. Um, it, it's going to be great. But I'll tell you this. If Borgata gets an MGM book, and that's true. It's coming. Woo. What's go- but, but the question I have is, here's the issue that you're going to have with, with – the, the one issue for for non sports betters, what does the rest of the city look like? Because I got to tell you, the boardwalk casinos, there's two open at this point, and they're all closed. So Borgata is just going to be rolling in the bucks, and Borgata is not on the boardwalk. Borgata is down, you know, way off. So it's like, I guess I wonder what are the other casinos going to do? I guess Trap will be heavily involved, which that'll be your go to boardwalk book if, if it happens, but. It's going be interesting. What, what do you got in there? Well, you got a couple in the board. Right? You got Trop, Caesars. What do you got? Bally's. You still got uh, yeah, resorts down there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, go ahead. But they're all the same building. You know, it's like, you know, Trump's closed, uh, Revel closed, Chauveau closed, you know, the, uh, down the Atlantic Club closed. I mean, everything's closed. It's like the only book, the place that are open, you're going to have to go cross town into the, into the, to the bay, basically, to, to, to be, to book to bed it's it's interesting i guess it'll be interesting to see how it looks but um as far as um as far as that we're we're definitely pumped up about it uh donnie let's get into action uh tonight um this is a game out of your wheelhouse buffalo laying 20 against the ball state cardinals 56 and a half i actually looked into this game donnie as as you know uh, a lot of us when we do shows you got to do a little note donnie you got to write down some things and you know I've been really blown away by the um, the the defense that has not been played by Ball State. Last four games, Donnie, Ball State's given up 58 and a half points a game. That's amazing, isn't it? It's an, and and it's not even baffling, Jeff, because it's every it's every game and it's every sort of different offense. Like if you want, like. We we reach a point, Jeff, where you see like Central Michigan is hanging 56 on you, and they like to play 24 to 20. You know, Toledo hangs 58. That's just, you know, normally what they do out there. Or excuse me, Eastern Michigan with 56 points. Excuse me, Eastern and Central, Jeff, both got 56 points right. against that football team. Northern Illinois, who you watched last night, is more of a, I'm going to ground and pound. I got a good running back. We'll open it up with read option. 63 points in that football game. And yeah, now it's... you're going to the more bottom of the barrel off. I don't even want to say that's disrespectful to Buffalo. But not up tempo. That team that says, you know what? We'll be happy to run read option and run eight yards of play and not have big splash and, and... plays. Don't be surprised if they run it up as well. And what we'll do is if you stop the read option, we'll just throw the ball because, I mean, Tyree Jackson's a good quarterback. I mean, he threw in front of four, over 400 yards last week, a couple touchdowns. Um, this um, this Bull State team last five game, last six games, Donnie, they've given up 50 or more five times. I mean, it's amazing how bad they are on defense. I think they can put up 14 points, Donnie, in this game. I think Buffalo could push to 45, if not more. Why can't they score 50? Their offense is all of a sudden pretty dynamic. You mentioned the, the read option. You mentioned uh, Jackson. He, I think he's a pretty decent quarterback as well. Uh, I think they're going to pick apart Ball State. Um, do I want to lay 20? No, I'll just go over. Um, it's a lean for me. I'll go over 56 and a half. I think this is like a 45, you know, 14, you know, 48, 14 type of game. It, a Ball State can give me 14 points. I'm confident this team will game will go over. And you look at lately, I mean, in their games, they are putting up, you know, 14, 17. Um, you know, I think that's feasible here. You know, it's interesting too, Jeff, if you look at Ball State and you want to see, like, they have one they have one player on their football team. So, we, you know, you hear me joke about Kent State. Like, they literally have one player that it runs through. Their running back is okay. But the one thing I actually would like to see, Jeff, if Miles starts in this football game as opposed to the younger kid, Plitt, in this one. I believe, was it Plitt that was starting last week? They were rolling through a... Uh, a couple of different – yes, Plitt was the uh, backup quarterback but, but that the younger kid Milas has been going through. 
Bilas, I think, was 10 for 16 in the last game. I yes. think he would be quarterback yes. here. He's a little bit more seasoned. Yes, that's, that, that's uh, what I'm hoping. That's, that's really what I'm hoping because to get at the next picture is he does have a decent arm, but you get the best of both worlds. Sometimes you see, with, like me talk about Eli Manning, boomer bust. That's unbelievable for a total. That's intercept. Like, what is it? Zero touchdown, seven interceptions, but he can throw and move the football. It's like a dream come true as long as you're not throwing the end zone interception you know if you're throwing it at your own 50 yard line it can be returned for a touchdown but I also want to have this when I talk about Mac football last night which came up a lot when you're looking at the games you know typical Mac games Jeff a lot of wind you saw wind where they were punting the ball like five yards in the northern Illinois game you couldn't really kick field goals that doesn't matter in Mac action it doesn't even matter because you're not playing really for field position at that point you're not saying like hey we're lining up for field goals and we can't make a 45-yard. And my point last night when I was looking at the Toledo game in the over is don't worry about the field goals. These knuckleheads miss 35-yarders like they're candy, like one of six from 35 or like beyond. The, the win doesn't matter. It's all about touchdowns. If you're kicking you know, field goals in action, you're probably not going to be covering the over-under in that situation because you want touchdowns. You saw in the Toledo game, there was wind in that game. It was freezing cold. They blitzed it. What, 66 or whatever? Toledo covered the over all by themselves in not the greatest of conditions out there. So when you look at the games tonight, Buffalo and Ball State, it's going to be cool. Only like three or four mile an hour wins in that one. But again, in matching in that cold weather, it doesn't matter. Unless it's like raining sideways out there. They don't change their game plan. They don't care about field position. Nobody has really good special teams. And that's the way it works out. And it worked out well last night. But again, and, and, Ball State and Buffalo tonight, not much weather. And how much, uh, how much will we see those, you know, those trick plays and things like that. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, if I see another person call a game a win with nine minutes left, I'm going to flip the hell out. Stop doing that. Stop. It is such a problem on, on, on Twitter. People do it all the time. It's so irritating. Stop doing that. There's nine minutes left. Do, do people watch these games? Stop doing that, please. It, it's just bad juju, man. It's bad karma. Just please. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you save that for the other time, Jeff. You got to, you got to, you, you got to save it for your effort. Like nine minutes to go, it doesn't look good. You say this game. I can't even believe I bet this game. What a terrible effort! No way I'm going to win. That's when you want right. to use you the don't ever, to reverse it. You, you yeah. don't ever come. Yeah, you don't ever come out and say this. Fuck, you know, uh, they're going to win. This is great. You know, it's just bad karma. Don't do it. Stop, please. I'm begging you. If if please don't do that. Um, but um. Yeah, the weather, the great point, Donnie. You definitely factored out the weather. Didn't mean a damn, Donnie. Yeah, exactly. And when, uh, and when I talk so yeah. about some people asked me last night, like, what do you mean? Like, why doesn't weather count in, like, the MAC but other places? Like, when you watch NFL football, what do coaches care about the most? I mean, I'm talking, Jeff, on an 80-degree September Sunday game, week three, and they're thinking about kicking a field goal from, like, the 35-yard line. Like, ooh, mm, don't want to give up that field position. And then they bring in the punter, and he, you know, coughs in corners or drops it at the two, and that kills you. In the MAC, that doesn't matter. Like, you saw even last night, Jeff. It was like a 40-yard or 45-yard or fourth and 13. They still went for it. It doesn't matter. They're not going to make the field goal. So you hope they get the 13 yards. If they don't, the other team's still going to start with good field position going back the other way. And the NFL wind really matters because coaches scheme and play towards that, saying, you know what? We have two quarters that we have the wind at our back. That's what we're really going to play football. In the MAC, they don't give a damn about that. Right. I totally agree. Uh, no, no, no. Donnie, you got to love the chat where people join late. And they ask questions. Yes, Jeff. I mean, I'm not going to lie, though. Looking at your shirt right there, it looks like it's, you know, it's it's Saturday for the boys. I'm not going to lie. No, it's Saturdays are for Belmont. That's I think you should do the rest of the show just like that. I think you should do the rest of the show just like okay. that. Okay, well, here we go. Uh, next game, Donnie. Uh, USF hosting Tulsa. Uh, okay, everyone see. Does everyone see that? No, no more questions about the shirt. Um, Donnie, <laughs> Tulsa hosting... Uh, Actually, Tulsa heading on the road to play South Florida. You know, South Florida, Donnie's getting a little. Uh, you know, they're not. I'm not saying they're not getting respect, but you know, they're kind of just hanging out, doing their thing, while Central Florida is uh, doing their bigger thing. Uh, but here, you got to lay a big number for a team that look has been very, I, I don't know, pedestrian. Let's say they've had some blowout wins. I mean, you blow out East Carolina, you blow out Cincinnati, you blow out Temple, but lately you haven't really done much blowing out. I mean, even last week, you, you couldn't put Connecticut away. Um, this is a pretty good matchup for Central Florida, though, or South Florida, though. You're facing a team in Tulsa that loves to run the ball. I think the the, the best thing about South Central getting confused, South Florida is their run defense. They've been great this year, uh, really ha uh, humming up the run. 3.25 yards a carry they've allowed. 
Uh, and Tulsa's been a mess on defense, Donnie, whether it's against the pass or against the run. Uh, I just, I'm not sure this is a particularly good matchup for, uh, for the Hurricane here. Uh, they're a team that has uh, lost six of seven. Uh, they're not playing well. They're civil on defense. Quentin Flowers could have a huge game in this game, Donnie. But are you comfortable laying 23? Because I'm sure the hell not. Uh, but I do see a team that's given up 548 yards a game in Tulsa. Tulsa could be in a situation here where they really get hummed in like last week where they've only put up 14, 17 points. Their offense hasn't been that great. Um, you know, over the last three games, they've scored 14 or less two times. So I could see a situation where South for the linebackers really play well, shut down Tulsa, and they really just run away in this game. I think I, I would lean with laying the points if I had to in this game. Um, I don't really want to get involved with Tulsa. You know, what's, you know what's interesting here, Jeff? I actually would lean. I, th- I saw somebody just took a big chunk out of that over-under because it was hovering around like 67. Chris now showing up at 64. Here's the thing I like to preface this football game on is, number one, South Florida. If Willie Taggart is there, it's completely different to me because I've watched a lot of South Florida football as you have, Jeff. They're just not as well coached, undisciplined at times. You know, run for a 30-yard touchdown, it's a holding penalty, you know, a procedural issue. You've seen that time and time again, and that reflective of their score, 37-20, that is a blowout win. But again, you're looking at that same type of team, you know, Connecticut, as opposed to coming in tonight with Tulsa week before. Houston's a good football team. Houston beat them 28-24, had no business beating them. And that's before that. That's when they made like almost like, you know, the game before a quarterback change there. Tulane, you know, 30 or 34 to 28 when he had a 34 to 7 lead. You can see something like that entering entering into the equation. I would actually lean a little bit more. I haven't bet it yet, but I'm leaning a little bit more towards the over because the one game I want to preface that I saw Tulsa play in, and they were an abomination in this football game, Jeff. You remember a couple weeks back, maybe a month ago, that hurricane game that got moved up to like 11 a.m.? Tulane, as we know, loves to run the football speed and read option, Jeff. 488 yards on the ground and seven yards per carry in that football game. Quinton Flowers is every bit the runner plus than what Banks is from um, Tulane in that situation. Running backs just the same way. They should be able to name their number, but then again, I mean, we're always dealing with, you know, how they're going to be coached with strong. You know, what are they going to do? Closing down the wire because you see it late in football games. If I had my wish, Jeff, I would go down and tell USF, like, look, man, let your quarterback run the football 30 times in this football game. He probably will run for 400 yards himself and you'll blow them out, but it's just not what they do. I'm more confident that there's going to be a lot of swings at the plate tonight with Tulsa and South Florida because of how fast Tulsa goes. I know USF does have a pretty good defense out there saying, you know, I don't I'm question if Tulsa can score that much on USF. The more swings at the plate you get, the more scoring you're going to get. I don't think the weather is that bad tonight in South Florida. I would lean on the over 64 right now just because the amount of times both of these teams, Jeff, are going to be on offense with the speed that they like to operate at. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I could see that. I mean, and you look at South Florida this year over-wise. I mean, I think, I think we've kind of gotten into this feeling that they're a great over team. I mean, the 3-6 and six to the – uh to the over this year. I mean, they've been an under team and so has Tulsa. Um, they both run the ball to a significant amount. If both these teams have any semblance of a run defense today, um, you know, this would be a lower scoring game. I'd imagine. I think a lot of people just jump and bet overs here, but it could be one of those games where South Florida gets out to a, a 28, 14 lead. Um, they're down 14, the whole game and just really trying to gun to get back into the game. Uh, it's a tough one to call. Uh, I lean. No, you're right, Jeff. Jeff, how about, how about if you look at this Tulsa South Florida game, because you brought up a good point earlier, like, South Florida is just out there doing their thing. Like, can they clinch or win the conference? No, because you're going to have that big meetup game. Are you just looking to make it through this game and then see what's on deck over the next week or two? They, they don't have a shot to make, you know, a probably a New Year's Day bowl because now they have the loss. Like, you're right. Like, what is their MO as opposed to just saying, like, you know what? Okay, we, we got a big game coming up, and do we really care about this Tulsa game? You're right about that. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting one. I could go real sharp here, Donnie. I get a weird feeling this game, like, just stays under the total. I mean, we're like Tulsa has, you know, they played a little bit better defensively lately. I mean, if they just played defensively for like a half, I think this game will stay under. I mean, they're going to run. That's what they do. Can they pay? I don't know. It's tough. It's a tough one. It, it, there's not a ton of value in this game. I won't be betting on it. I don't think Donnie will be betting on it. I definitely like the other game a lot more, the over in that one. Um, you would agree, Donnie, right? 
I mean, yeah, I mean, we're dealing with ball. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and again, Jeff, we like to preface that. The Maction isn't built to stay under. At the, at the weirdest moments, they're faking punts. They're just doing stuff that makes no sense. Nobody plays defense, you know, broken coverages all over the place. You're right. And it's, we always like to preface it, Jeff, like, this is Ball State's defense. Like, you're waiting for them to be like, you know what? Can you guys at least tackle somebody? They really don't. You know, Buffalo is the one team that you would say, like, you know, maybe if this game would stay under, it's because Buffalo just ran the football and didn't hit home run plays. Like, you know, first down, you got six, second down, you got three, third down, you got another six and, you know, eat the clock up that way. But if you're betting unders with ball state, just good luck because the other team is going to hang 40 plus on you every night. And again, if Milo's plays tonight, Jeff, that's a boost for the over under. Don't get me wrong on that. That's sure. definitely a boost. No, I totally, I totally agree. Johnny, let me, or uh, Donnie, uh, Donnie, let me ask you a question here. Um, mm-hmm. When you're doing a, when you're doing a show, what yeah. is something that it's it's tough to do a show when you got a game on, right? It's so tough, isn't it? it? It's not tough to do a show when there's a game on. It's tough to do a show when a game you're vested in. Like if you have a wager on the game. No, that's what I'm or saying. If it's like, that's, you what, know, that's what I mean. Yeah. No, you can't, I can't do it. That's you see I mean. me. How many times do we do shows when, when in baseball season? When we're doing the late night show, and I literally didn't even want to come on the air until like the game was <laughs> over. Because I, I, I can't I'll, even like, I can't concentrate. Yeah, and, and I'll, I've, I don't know if I've said this before, but. When I don't, when I bet a college game like this Illinois State game I have, the plus nine, yep. I, I haven't even looked at the score. I don't want to know the no. score. I don't want to. And you're hoping nobody in the chat box is like, "Oh man, what a bad play!" Like, what, happened? Like, what happened? Right. What happened? What happened on that play? What Johnny happened? Johnny Kicknuts yeah, exactly. is literally updating the score every minute. It's like I don't want to know. I just <laughs> let, let the game play out, please. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to know. Just let. Let's just let's do, let's worry about other things. It's like when you're uh, when you're do you're you're in a bad place. Someone says, "Think of something good," and and that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to think of something uh, good. Uh, Donnie, um, Steelers and the Titans. Interested to hear your opinion on this game. Uh, it's a tough one, I, I think. Uh, Steelers laying seven totals, forty four. You got the seven and two Steelers facing the six and three Titans. How about that, Donnie? I, mean, I was surprised to see. You know, radar man. Yeah, I mean the Titans are six and three. They're you know, they're not looking unbelievable, but they're winning football games, and they're leading their division. This is a huge game for them. Every game's huge for them uh, in the season. And, you know, it's not necessarily, done anything they've done offensively. It's defensively. They've looked very good lately over the last couple of weeks. The problem is it was against Cincinnati, Baltimore, and Cleveland. Uh, what, are, what Quickly, Donnie, what are the three uh, things about those offenses that are similar? Was it was Cincinnati, so your quarterback Baltimore is Jack. It was, Cleveland. yeah, you get in zero quarterback play and forceful offense where you actually have to be like, you know what, we better get out here and score thirty tonight. And they're terrible offenses. That that would be yes, the, that's the what, difference yes, between yes, terrible uh, quarterbacking, the and they don't force you into your own offense. Yes. Plus, uh, two of those games were at home as well. Uh, now you got to go on the road. It's forty degrees and windy. Tonight in Pittsburgh, 17 mile an hour winds. Uh, I know it's pretty windy. I, from what I've I've saw with the weather report, it's going to get more windy. It's very very cold. It's, you know, in the 40s, it's going to be 40 at game time in this one. Titans are one and three against the spread on the road this year, Donnie. Um, and you know, when I back Big Ben, I want to do it at home. I, I I like him at home. I've always liked him at home. Um, and and this offense for 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 Tennessee on the road is it's not been good at all. I mean, 18 points a game, Donnie, they're only averaging about 260 yards a game. Uh, that's not good. Um look, I know there's some defensive concerns here, especially with the Steelers Mike Mitchell might be out, Joe Hayden is out. Um but I think both these teams, you know, are kind of in a predicament right now where defensively they both played pretty well. There are question marks on uh, on the offensive side, particularly with Tennessee. Um, could I see Pittsburgh kind of you know, scoring some points in this game? Sure. I think they're going to cover, and I think they're going to win this game, you know, 27-10, something like that. I really think they they, they run away in this game, frankly. Uh, I think Tennessee's a solid football team, but I'm not a fan of them on the road. Um, Pittsburgh's sneaky good defensively, particularly against the run as well. That's one thing they don't get a ton of credit for. But you look at against the run, Donnie. Last four games, um, they've allowed 28, 71, 71, and 71. So they've allowed 71, three straight games, and 28. That's pretty damn impressive uh, against the yeah. run. Ever since that Jacksonville game, they've really turned it up. Uh, I'm actually leaning under. I think this is a sneaky good under game. It's a Thursday night game. Um, I think 
there would be a lot of punts in this game early on. Uh, both teams kind of adapting to the weather. The weather's not ideal either. Uh, windy is definitely not good. Uh, I'm going to lean like 27-10, 24-13, something like that. I'm going to go under 44, Donnie. Yeah, you know what's interesting about that is, is, is I like the thought process you're going through because it's hard to bet against the Steelers at home. I know some people want to look at that Jacksonville game, 30-9. to nine. Look what happened in that football game. I get it. I mean, everybody's going to have an off day. or It's back when the Steelers weren't playing so well, righted the ship. But the one MO to me with Pittsburgh is they're not in the in that mode yet. You're waiting for them just to turn it on and be the Steelers where it's like 34-14 to 14 every time they play at home, like really mashing around. They haven't showed me that much. I mean, the Kansas City game was a great win, 19-13. They were up a little bit more points than that, but as you saw, they uh, led a little bit through the back door. But they still ended up winning. What are they getting, plus three, plus four in that football game? So they won and covered that one. The Cincinnati game, 29-14 at home. Detroit, 20-15. to 15. Indianapolis, they should have lost the game last week and when they end up winning 20-17. to 17. The MO of Tennessee here, if you take out those games, you know, where Mar- Marcus Mariota wasn't playing, you know, last in that Dolphins game, 16-10. You know, their MO is they're going to play you and play you close. 36-22 with the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Go on the road where Mariota, you know, banged up, not able to move outside the pocket. They escape against a bad football team. 12-9 in overtime. They beat Baltimore 23-10 when they had a 20 a uh, 10-point lead, 23-13 to late. So a late touchdown on that one. Beat Cincinnati 24-20. Um, the M.O. to me of the Titans is they stay close. If you're going to give me seven points with the Titans, I haven't seen enough, Jeff, out of the Steelers. And let's not forget in this football game, you're down your best cornerback and you're down your best safety in this football game. That's half of your secondary is going to miss this football game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. That could add up. And again, you're asking the Steelers by to win double digits. Can they? I don't know if they can win by double digits. I might be leaning on the seven points here. Not a great game. Real blah. I wish the line, Jeff, was like seven and a half or six and a half. But you're putting that rate at seven. I'm going to lean on taking the seven points in this football game. This is uh, this is one of those games where this could definitely be, you know, a seven point win. You know, it's it's kind of if you, if it's six and a half, you take the favorite. If it's seven and a half, you take the dog. I hear you on that. Um, it, it's definitely an interesting one. I think this would be a good game to watch. I really do. I could see this. I like you know, it. I could see yeah. it being close, like you said. I mean, Pittsburgh doesn't, you know, they haven't blown people out. I mean, you look at all these games. Last four games during this win streak, 19-13, 29-14, there's one blood, 20-15, 20-17. But the three of the four were on the road, Donnie. They're back at home here. And the, the one home win, I mean, it was an easy winner. Um, they've been good at home. That's the key for me. Other than that, Jacksonville game where he just couldn't stop the run. Um, I just don't really trust Tennessee. I don't. I don't trust them offensively. I wonder is the defensive thing a little bit fraudulent? Um, and they haven't been ATS good on the road. But it'll be an interesting game. I, I definitely think from a, a fan perspective, this would be a pretty good game. Uh, I'm going to lean under 44, uh, Donnie. So let's let's have a let's how about a 21 17 type of game? That would be good, wouldn't it? Pittsburgh 21 yeah, give me 17. something to watch. Yeah, we got a lot. There's a lot to watch tonight, folks. And by the way, speaking of watching, over 180 plus watching live in here, me and Jeff always like to thank you for that. It's a lot of fun. Chat box been great today. We're going back and forth with information. It's going to be real exciting. Me and the big man are very fired up, folks. For Monday, 10 a.m., it's going to be a lot of fun in here. Talking yeah, a lot of yeah. lifestyle sports stuff. Talking a lot of sports games. We're still going to be having breakdowns, but overall, you know, grab that cup of coffee. You know, how you wake up and just turn on the laptop. Like what I missed last night. That's where me and the big man are going to come in on Monday. Also, folks, if you haven't done so yet, uh, sbrodds.com. Find those latest line movements there. Completely free service at SBR Sports Picks on Twitter. Follow us through there. You see us always retweeting. And the most important thing here, folks, look at the likes, man. 49 to nothing right there. Fantastic. It's what we love. Whether you like it, dislike it, all that interaction does help us. Hit the subscribe button right there as well. Every single time me and the big man go live, it comes right to your phone. You pop into the live chat box. We have a ton of fun, and it's only starting, and we're, we're really excited about it. Folks. Yeah, we got some cool things planned, Donnie. I, I know that I've been working yeah. on, you know, um, you know, some an interesting kind of you know, intro to the show, which would be cool. Um, you know, you know, we'll do some you know fun like little rundowns and things like that. And I actually need people's help, Donnie. And I'm going to ask the chat right now if they can help me yes. with this. So, um, I ordered two different. They're very large portraits to put behind me. All right, so. I've tried to get something that works and it, it's for me, it's like, this is an office. I just sit here and I do the work that I need to do. Um, you know, and when we're on the air throughout the years, Donnie, I've had many different backgrounds. I remember when my computer was out in my, you know, kind of in my little area right here where my background was like my kitchen. It's my, my apartment's laid out a certain way. This is an office, the, the kitchen and hallway that my bedrooms way in the back with the bathroom in the same room. So I have to ask, I got two portraits, Donnie canvas portraits, 
one of Biggie Smalls. It's totally dope. It's colorful. It's really cool. And then I got one of Michael Jordan as well. So I wonder, should I put both up? Should I put one up? What should I do? What do you Bofa, think? Jeff. Bofa. I think I should do both? I kind of thought that myself. Kind of have my head in the middle. Yeah. Two, two New York legends, Brooklyn, Brooklyn made, uh, Biggie Smalls and uh, MJ. Uh, MJ's my hero. I'm obsessed with Jordan. Um, yeah, well, I hate you. See you later. Um, don't come in and say I hate Albania. That's a fireable offense, Donnie. Um, and you've been in here before, Ignis. You've been in here saying a lot of stupid things, I've noticed. Uh, Biggie. Yeah, a lot of Biggie fans. I- I'm a Biggie guy. Uh, I think he is, other than Jay-Z, the greatest rapper ever. Ready to Die is one of the greatest pieces of entertainment I've ever listened to. Um, so I'm excited. I, I got I to gotta see. We'll, we'll see. Maybe I'll just put both up, Donnie. You know, both, both of them. Yeah, yeah, maybe you maybe rotate legend. each day, whatever your feeling is. Like, you might be in a mood. Like, you see me, like, sometimes I'll go to the gym or I'll be around town. I'll be capping games. You see me retweet out. Like, it's my mood today. EPMD is my mood today. You know, Naughty by Nature is my mood today. Biggie is my mood today. Jay-Z is my mood today. Sometimes you might just have to rotate it through the background what you're feeling about, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. and we got some cool things planned. I got some uh, some little segments. I'm going to do some giveaways with some things that I have that I want to give away. Um, I've mentioned, Donnie, I have a friend of mine. He's a... Uh, he sells sneakers. Um, I'm going to try to get him on to do some cool things. He's got a online store and that kind of stuff. So we're, we're going to do some cool things. It's going to be fun. I recommend you all wake up with us. It's going to be a great thing. You know, I'm going to have to wake up a little earlier, which is, which is cool, but it, it allows me to get a little bit more stability in my life. Donnie uh, right now. I'm i uh, I'm a bit of a bachelor. I, I don't go to sleep till late. I wake up late. It's just kind of a, a shit show, but um I got to get a little bit more uh, cohesiveness in my life. An 8 a.m. Um, wake up call. Yes. I'm looking forward to it, actually, though. I've, I've always I've never been much of a sleep person. I don't really care about sleep. I if I never had to sleep, I'd be OK with it. If I could just keep going. I hate going to sleep. It's kind of a waste of my time. Um, I like to, to be up and, and doing things. So. I don't mind it. I'm ready for it. But, Donnie, we have got uh, 12 minutes or so to go here. Um, do want to just ch- touch on a little afternoon college hoops here. Um, we got Jeff, we want to come of, on, 527, 528. Let's not wait any longer in the chat box. 527, 528, Jeff. Come on, bring it. Yeah, no, I, know, I, I that was actually where I was going to go, Donnie, with, with this conversation. Uh, game coming up here, Temple Owls hosting uh, the Old Dominion Monarchs. However, remember – this is not a home game for Temple. This is down in South Carolina. It's a uh, little tournament, the Charleston Classic. So um, make sure this time of the year, Donnie, and, and to all the listeners, make sure you're looking at where games are. Um, just because it says the team's at home doesn't necessarily mean they're at home. They could be in the Bahamas and you get got and, and you think they're playing up in North Philadelphia. It's down in South Carolina. But I actually like Temple, and, and I'm going to mention this is a game I'm going to be betting. I was going to give it out at the end of the show. Um, I like Temple in this spot. Temple hasn't played a regular season game yet. It's kind of interesting. They had a, uh, a little exhibition game last week against uh, Jefferson University, which, I mean, you know, Donnie, I mean, you go to Jefferson to be a doctor or a nurse. Uh, you don't go there to play basketball. So it was just a little exhibition game for Fran. Uh, but I'm very high on Temple this year. I've made that clear. It's not just because I'm a fan. I like their guard play. I think they have some of the best guard play in the conference. Getting Josh Brown back healthy was pretty big. You got Shiz Alston there, kind of, you know, point guard and waiting. Quentin Rose is a great player. And then, Donnie, we saw him last year. Obi Anechionia didn't – he played passive at times. He didn't – he's a great player. He's a kid that can really bother you. Um, he just didn't play with enough, I, I don't know, a confidence to me. He looked a little shaken, I don't know, for, for certain parts of the year. They were losing games at home that they shouldn't. Um, and Old Dominion, look, Jeff Jones has done a nice job there. This isn't one of his stronger teams. Um, I just think Temple, conversely with the guard play that they have, they're just going to work and, and bother Old Dominion. I don't think Old Dominion is particularly good, to be honest with you. They've always had trouble scoring. That's always been a problem for their team. They'll try to play defense well, but I think the guard play will really uh, bother Old Dominion. For me, I'm on uh, I'm on the Owls here, minus the, uh, minus the four, Donnie. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's a first shot. And again, I saw the articles there, Jeff, why Temple waited so long to uh, get to their first basketball game. It's kind of interesting stuff, but finally here, finally ready to play and kick off the season up here in the Northeast. We'll definitely be catching a couple games. You know we'll be at the uh, 
by f- definitely be at the uh, Wichita State game. So we'll have some fun going to uh, games down at Temple. And Temple's going to be good this year. So be a lot of lot of good good things are looking up for Philadelphia, man. Which I can't say over my forty years on this planet, you know that very much. Yeah, I actually wanted to tell you, Don, I have some uh, pretty dope tickets this year for Temple. So I actually went out and mm. bought them. I spent, I think, it wasn't it wasn't really that expensive. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll get two tickets. You know, go down when I want to go down, take you or, you know, if you're in the area, you want to come to a game, feel free to hit me up. I'd love to hang out with some people. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll head up into the, to the, to the urban wasteland that is North Philadelphia. I'll meet you in South Philly. We'll catch a train up to, up to uh, the Leah Chorus Center. Don, there's nothing better on a Tuesday night down to the city you know get something to eat hit the train go up to cecil be more get off hear that stupid <laughs> that stupid thing uh you get off the train you walk up uh the stadium's right there um it'll be uh it'll be a fun time so if you're in the area feel free to hit me up uh donnie we always like to hang out with the listeners jack ryan hung out with us remember at the phillies game yeah uh, exactly was, man front row tickets yo bring a listener once to go down jack's great guy you know yeah, we always have uh we always like to, to hang out with the listeners and go to games and stuff. But yeah, for right now, that'll be my my only other play. I have Illinois State uh, pending. Uh they're winning with, with like five or so to go. So hopefully they could take care of business and we could start out. As far as the other couple games, I like Clemson a little bit. I'm gonna look more into it. Ohio is is poor. Ohio's real bad. Um they lost a lot of players from last year. The best player, Jason Carter, who is their offense, is is gone. Uh, they looked terrible in their first game. Uh, Clemson might be a real good play, particularly at, at, at a home game here, basically. Um, good good defense for uh, for the Brown, uh, Brad Brunell crew. I like that one. Kind of like Hofstra a little bit as well. But for me, the only other game I'm going to be getting on is uh, is the Temple Owls here uh, early on, uh, minus the four. Um, a little LaSalle action tonight, Jeff. South Alabama, nice win. Actually, I watched that game in full. Uh, as I was watching a couple other things at LaSalle Penn game there. They pulled it out at the end at the Plester. Always good basketball when the Big Five gets together. So they're going to travel down. What are we looking at that Jaguars game, Jeff, with his, uh, with uh, LaSalle? Now, that looks like to be a true home game for LaSalle. Danicola Arena, is that true? Uh, yes. Yo, you there, Donnie? Yeah, I got you. What's up, man? Okay, sorry. I You cut out for a minute. Uh, yeah, that is a, a true home game for the LaSalle. Listen, I got to ask about LaSalle. I mean, are they – my question for them is, are they this good defensively or are they just – they just played two teams that aren't particularly good offensively? That's really the question. And they're getting a team in here that's not particularly good offensively. South Alabama is uh, – is a team out of the Sun Belt that doesn't really they're, – they're a lot like their football team. They don't really do much good. They're just kind of a middling team. Uh, I'm a I'm a LaSalle guy. I like, you know, Giannini. I'm a Pookie Powell fan for sure. Um, I want to see if this defense can continue their play um, because both these teams come in pretty good defensively. Um, you know, but is it a question of while they're playing Penn and St. Peter's in the first two games and you know, South Alabama comes in and maybe, hum, you know, humbles them a little bit? I kind of want to take the under, Donnie. Both these teams have played really well in the defensive end. I don't think LaSalle should have any problem here again playing better, playing well on the defensive end. And South Alabama is not going to give them uh, a ton. I would lean under. Uh, but, you know, when you bet unders, you have to have a lot go your way. But some of these totals early on have been too high, uh, particularly, you know, you look at um, like the Maryland game last night. I, I talked about it on, uh, on um, some things that I do as far as the Maryland game. Total is way too high, and we saw that last night. Some of these totals are way too high. I saw a question: uh, Is Club Egypt still open? Uh, no, no. Uh, Donnie, <laughs> you were you go. a Club Egypt guy? Yeah, that was of course, your sure. Who wasn't? Yeah. yeah, who wasn't back in the day? Yeah, good call. That was a little before said my that. time. Who said that? Actually, somebody grew up in Philadelphia. Uh, uh, who was that here? Uh, Scott K asked: uh, <laughs> Is Club Egypt still open? Uh, that, that was before my time. I do know it's not open. Donnie was a frequenter of. Of Club Egypt back in the day. <laughs> uh, that and that. Even, Donnie, even who, Shampoo was going back in that day. Yeah, Delaware Avenue was popping I, back then. Back in the I day. went to Shampoo many times, Donnie, yeah. for the phone parties yeah. when there I was a kid. Um, I met this girl there. I still talk to her to this day. She's one of my good friends from the Jersey Shore area. We uh, we used to go to Shampoo all the time. We'd go out in the city. We were, we were like teenagers, 17. They used to have a teen night there, Donnie, back in the day at Shampoo when we were kids. Um, that was my yeah. thing back in the day, Donnie. Uh, Karma had one in seaside and i would remember i would go to seaside and i'd see merge open down the street from from carmen i used mm-hmm. to think to myself motherfucker how bad i want to go in there because the, the music bamboo. just yeah. 
Yo, cuz the music just bumped from Merge. Like, I, when I tell you, I'm a huge ED, uh, dance music guy. The EDM shit, I don't fuck with, but like the, the Johnny, uh, Jonathan Peters, Louis DeVito shit, I used to, oh my God, it's beautiful. I used to want to go to Merge so bad, but I couldn't because it wasn't old enough. Um, and then it closed, which was a shame. But uh, yeah, there's so many great clubs, Donnie, that, that aren't around anymore. Um, Club Egypt is a big one in Philadelphia. The club seat of Philadelphia is poor uh, at this point. Uh, got a couple minutes left. Uh, Donnie and Bigman, who are your top five MCs? Um, I'm not going to open that one up because I've said a couple, and people are always like, how the fuck can you say that guy's the best Yeah, we MC get mad ever. at you for that, Jeff. We do get mad at you for that. My favorite MC ever is Beanie Siegel. I mean, it always has been and always will be. Uh, but I love Jada Kiss. I love Styles P. I'm a big D-Block guy. Uh, I love um, I love Hova. Your big diplomats uh, guy, yeah. Yeah, fuck yeah. Cameron Cameron was on a uh, Levitard yesterday. It was it was great seeing. I him. did see him in a I, suit. I always, yeah, I didn't even recognize him from there. Yeah. In a suit and a tie. Yes, yeah, you're right. Cameron always <laughs> makes me laugh. Every time I see him interviewed, I always laugh because it's like he's got that like Harlem like you know uh, accent. He's just like Dan Levitard asked him, uh, "Who in the sports media world do you hate?" And he goes, "I don't know, Wu King." You know, and he's like talking about Will Kane and like, yeah, it, I miss those days, man. Everything was so good in the 2000s, man. I mean, music was great. The way we used to dress, Donnie. I remember Rockaware, extra baggy, uh, Jabode, no, baggy, fucking Air Force Ones. I used to get a pair of Air Force Ones, Donnie. I had this cat. He would come into my barbershop. His name was Tony. He would come in with um with Air Force Ones, forty bucks every week. I bop them off, forty bucks to get a a new pair of whites. I, I miss those days, man. So yeah, good. people bring it up in the Remember chat box. The- Mario says state property. I mean, come on. What, what's the state property MO? Like, what are you told in state property? Get Jeff? down or lay down, cuz. Get down there or lay go, down. Man, it's, there's yeah. no bigger state property fan than me. I, 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 Oskino and Sparks are two of the most underrated rappers ever. Uh, the Young Guns. I mean, Rockefeller Records was just so perfect, man. It was the best. Damon Dash. Like, how could you not fuck with that? I still wear Fila, Conrado. Conrado's my shit. Conrado's got it. He knows what it's up. Um, yeah, dude, I could relive this all day. Aniche, sure. Um, yeah, what a, what a great time to be alive, Donnie. Donnie, do you remember mm-hmm. Freestyle Friday on uh, 106 and Park? Yeah, probably uh, 106 and Park. No, I didn't really watch that. Time. I thought you were talking about like the radio where you got to give your, like a shout-out to your school and a little rap no, they or something ha- like they that. No, uh, they would have Rap City to Basement from 4 to 6 with Big Tigger. Um, that was a great show. They had a, they would do freestyles, and then 106 and Park would come on the Countdown show, and they would do Freestyle Friday. And they would have this thing, Donnie, where you would battle another rapper. They would do like a 30 second a piece rap off, and they would have these kids. They would go on like 10 week runs, and there was this Chinese kid they had. Um, his name was Jin, um, and he would rap in Chinese. Jin was the shit man back in the day, um, but. Yeah, that, so many memories, Donnie. But I could talk about this all day. Um, I uh, No, they weren't. They were totally real. It's called getting a deal, Jesus. Uh, do you know about getting deals in the hood? You said you're from the Bronx. You should know all about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, nowadays the kids, they don't know how to dress. They're wearing the tight pants, you know, that kind of crap. Uh, we're, we're, what happened to the baggy jeans, cuz? Um, but, yeah, so we'll wrap it up. I'll give you a recommendation, though, on a rapper to check out, Donnie. Um, people are talking about – we talk about Jin. There's a kid I, I love. His name is China Mac. He's one of my favorite uh, rappers, Chinese kid. Um, he did 10 years in the joint. Uh, he's great, really good rapper, China Mac. If you know what I'm talking about, he's from uh, – I think he's from Queens or Harlem. Check out China Mac. But, uh, Donnie, it's it. We're mm-hmm. wrapping it up. That's it. One thirty. Everyone have a finale great day. tomorrow. Donnie, Jeff, we'll the finale yeah. tomorrow on a football Friday. How about that? Love it, man. Love it. Yeah, football Friday. Then we'll switch off to the to the to the manic Monday, the new show on Monday. But uh, Donnie, you have a couple days left of the closing line. I didn't even know last mm-hmm. uh, Tuesday was my last closing line. I didn't even know. I was uh, cut so off before I got one know. tonight with Teddy. We're going to talk nothing but star running backs tonight on the closing line. You're going to want to tune into that one. And then Friday, we ended with Drew Martin. And then next week, we just go full blast. Like, now we're promised here, Jeff. Like, we have all the expensive equipment. It's going to have, like, a nice new setup with a little ticker on the right-hand side of the screen. We're going to have fun. A lot of the stuff that we roll through today, sports, you know, what's going on, through sports, fashion, all that stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's not going to be any change. It's still going to be me and the big man going back and forth, yelling at each other, disagreeing, giving out picks, and having a lot of fun. But now it's that first thing in the morning where you're going to wake up and be like, yeah, I got to pop on Donnie and the big man. 
and we're going to have some fun. And that's exactly what's going to take place Monday. Really looking forward. To it. It's a great lineup on SBR all throughout the day. You know, Pete and the uh, Pete, or the, excuse me, Low Shack in the bag is going to be on there at 12 o'clock right behind us. Then they're going to come on at night at six, recap all their plays. Because you know, those guys love to do picks, which is great. We know a lot of you guys out there love to check in on picks. They're going to rip right through that right before the games get started. Awesome, awesome lineup set up next Monday through Friday here right on sportsbookreview.com. Don't miss any of it. We love to do it, and we hope to do it for a long time, fellas. Were you in a gang? Yes, I've had those conversations before. Donnie, you know about that. We've had that conversation, Delta. Yes, for like a year I was, but we <laughs> we weren't like the Bloods and the Crips. I mean, we were like a street gang, me and my for my boys. Um, Donnie, barring overtime, I'm going to hopefully hit, hit this Illinois State game. But everyone have a great day. Uh, Don will be back later. I'll be chatting college basketball at some point as well. Be sure to join us tomorrow at 1230 here on the SBR channels. Everyone have a great day. Free Meek Mill.